he was hitting maybe 20% of his balls in a grid. You know, now he's hitting 70% of his balls in a grid at even a further number because we understand spin rate and all that stuff. But the it, grid it, looks like a football field. Yeah, it's pretty big. But, but it's big, like three football fields. But at 50 mile, at 50 years old, he still swings it at 150 miles an hour. But you never seem to see those guys on the pro tour, though, right? Well, I understand their equipment's different too. Their their equipment's a little different. Yeah. You, uh, there was a Sadowski. guy named Jamie Sadowski tried to get out there for a while, mm -hmm. and I played golf against Jamie and a couple things up in Northern Ohio. But um, their body is made for pure speed, and for some reason they cannot transfer it into golf. Scott's getting close because he's worked with me and Melissa a lot. But they can't transfer. What do they hit from 100 yards? Hmm. Scott's hitting sandwich from 150 yards. He, they, well, what do you do when you got a 100 yard shot? What do you do with 50? So they, they have a hard time learning that. Now Scott's getting better at it, but you know, it's, it's, she swings it probably around 95. I swing it right around 95 to 100. Think about that for a minute. He's swinging it 150 miles an hour and launching it up here. So when we talk about launch, this goes that's back to this. Help, that's what's going to help us launch it. That's what helps launch us, the hinge. If you want to hit it just above the ground. Do don't, don't hit it in the hands. <laughs> it's going to go up. Yes, ma'am. Well, along that line, yeah. I play down in Alabama in the wintertime. Yeah. And it's just sandy and dry and the balls yeah. roll forever. And I play with some women that are 85, 90 years old and do that, just barely go back. And their balls go forever because they roll forever. They so we deliberately try not to hit them as high. So that we get that roll, is that a good thing? I mean, or well, would we still get more? Yeah, if you could actually launch it, you'd still even go farther. It would you know, go Just farther. because of the resistance that the grass and the ground creates. It's slow it's enough to roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Florida, Texas, Alabama, you kind of get away with not launching it. But here we can't get away with it because we're undulating, um, so we're wet. wet. We have to try to maximize carry. But still, if you could maximize carry and then get that roll once it hits the ground, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, yeah. It, it actually goes farther if you can get it in the air. Yeah. People don't want to believe that. Well, look how far my ball rolled. Well, it's still going to roll that far whether it comes down here or there, right? It's still going to roll that far. Okay. Yep. Yep. We just need to get you to launch it as far as you can. Yeah. That's a good, good question. Because it's really dry out on our range right now, so it's going to appear like everything's just going really far. And it is, it's rolling far. But if you can launch it, It'll go higher. Farther. Yeah, if you can get it higher in the air. And that's why all the laws have changed on the drivers is to get everybody to launch it in the air so they can hit the ball further. And you heard me this on day one. I said everybody should be hitting a three wood off the tee. So if you have this, the more expensive and the better your clubs are, is your driver going to automatically take it? Like if I use one driver that's cheap and another one that's really expensive and better made, going to take my ball farther. Mm -hmm. Apples to apples. Yeah. 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 So um, if you if you were to buy like a box set of clubs at Dick's or Golf Galaxy, it, everything comes in one bag, top flight. Yeah. I did to start out with. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's great to start out with because you're learning. You're not sure if you want to spend money. Right. I found the driver and the putter are probably the two weakest links in those clubs. Usually the irons are decent yeah. where you can get by with them. But really the driver, you miss that pop off of the face. And understand the shaft is actually the engine of the driver now. So club head is super important, but it's the shaft that's really going to be your engine. And so we have to spend more money. My, I have a $400 shaft in my driver because it's the engine. So my shaft almost costs more than the driver did originally. Um, and I love it. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's fit, it's fit it's for me. Yeah, I got, what, 15 extra yards out of it just because I spent a little more money. I have worked on it too, but... Uh, but technology in the driver has come so far. And if we bought a driver two years ago, oh, you're not going to see much difference. If it's 7, 14, 20 years ago. Big difference. Big difference. Big difference. People don't want to believe that, but it's so much different from just five years ago. Yeah. The drivers are changed that much on the technology and the shaft and the face. So we the call it the trampoline effect. 
Yeah, no. A guy that has a world record, he would be used one of the best drivers on top of being good already anyway. You got it. And their drivers are longer than ours for long drive, and the face is what we call hotter. They still have regulations on what's allowed and what's not, but if you look at his driver, they're three, four inches longer About three than inches ours. longer. Um, and then the head is a just a different kind of make altogether. You couldn't use it, you couldn't use it legally on the PGA Tour or the LPGA Tour. That's the reason why you don't. Yeah. Now Callaway's made a big push in the long drive contest, <clears throat> but um, because they're they're right on the verge of being legal and not legal. And if you watch any of the PGA Tour lately, there's being there's being a lot of driver testing going on because a couple guys on the PGA Tour had illegal drivers. Whether they knew about it or not, I, it's not in my business whether they knew about it or not. But you can tell when a guy is be able to shoot, he can't hit that ball that far. His club head speed doesn't match that. Does that mean well, if his club head speed is only 112 miles an hour, he can only hit it so far. When he's hitting it farther, that raises questions. And so now there a lot of equipment's being tested on some of those guys who. They shouldn't be able to hit that ball 25 yards farther than what they're supposed to hit. Math and science is there. But technology, the box set, the driver and the putter are, are huge on that part. It's the shaft, but sometimes How do you the figure base. out what, what you need, what kind of driver you need? And so um, Larry and I can help you. And what we do is we watch the launch. We watch how the ball either falls out of the sky or it moves forward. We can use numbers or technology. We have numbers verify. on that one thing down there. Yeah, we can use numbers to verify, but um, we can see a lot just with eyeballs. Like, hey, that shaft's probably not right, or we need to look at something different. Um, when we get fit, it's a little different. They use a lot of numbers, a lot and of they've numbers. got over 500 different shafts that they can put in our current driver head. I mean, it's you can spend all day. At that point, you can't hit golf balls anymore. You're so tired. <laughs> so you, you talk about, you talk about like, well, driver's fitting. Another shot? There's no way. It was less than a week ago. We had a big wedge fitting system out here with Strix on Cleveland Golf. They came out. We only had two people show up, which is okay. But both of them said, that "What? They were out here for almost three hours, a little over three hours." They go, "God, that was so much fun." Because a guy goes, "Well, let me show you. You need to use this shaft with this bounce, or this shaft with this bounce." And it bounces on the bottom of the club and how thick it is or how thin it is, digger, scoop, or whatever it is. And they, they just, they were, they, we couldn't get them to shut up because they had such a fun <laughs> time with it, you know. But you can go 500 shafts for a driver. Yeah, I'm usually pretty easy. Like, I'll hit three or four. I'm like, no, I really like that. And she, she's pretty quick. It I'm takes not. a little bit longer. I'm a little bit longer. <laughs> He's pretty picky. All right. Um, and then the last thing you're going to do when we get down there, so your first job is to hinge that club up. First job. Second job is to get into that balanced finish like we worked on last week. You okay. gotta get balanced, so gotta stay finished. We have to stay balanced when we get here and we're trying to make that letter T between our spine and the golf club. Okay, and if you can if you can do this and then get to here, chances are you're gonna hit a pretty good shot. Because impact will explain getting to that left side first for me. Some well, people why they get to you that can't, you can't get shut there. up. Some people get to the front side too fast. Okay, so when we take the club back, hinged. my thumb hinged, so I'm up here. If I get into my front side too fast, my spine just got in front of where my golf ball would be. Okay? So if my golf ball is inside my forward heel, that's my golf ball. And I'm here, and I lean like this. I've just taken the loft off my club, kind of like I showed you with that driver and me in high school. It's going to be hard to launch my golf ball, and it's going to go... It could go low left, it could go right Top as well. Anyway. Yeah. All right. You could actually, um, if you've ever made a mark on the top of your driver, sometimes we call them dummy marks or logos <laughs> that we put on top of our driver. It's because you were in front of it. Is that because you went underneath them? You it? didn't go underneath it. The only way to make that mark is to actually be in front of it. Go and steep. Right. So, also, if I get here, it's really hard for me to stay on balance. I'm probably going to fall off. If I drop the club, or not drop the club, if I hinge and I turn and I stay with my spine behind, behind the, the golf ball, and I so unhinge no just like we talked about, my weight is still here, okay? And then after I hit my golf ball, then I'm gonna get into my forward leg. And Key now I can stay back. Okay? So on tour, they've got 70 to 80% of their weight 
inside their back leg, it's it set up. Okay? When they get here, it's the same. When they get here, it's the same. Through impact, it's the same. After impact, it moves. Okay? So I know we're all excited, like, I gotta hit it! Because <laughs> we will. We're gonna do that. We all do that. We, we do all that. do that. Yep. I do it probably more than she does. But I need you to just stay patient and let your club hit the ball before you get on that forward leg. Okay. So it's just yeah. kind of the opposite with your when you're hitting the wedge. You got those chip most shots we loaded in here. Front. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So with the wedges, they're shorter, and we were able to load our weight a little forward of our golf ball and just stay right on top of it. That helps with, us make a descending blow without trying to hit down on it. With our wedge, if I tried to get forward after being forward, we fall over in it. <laughs> I know it sounds really silly, but you're right. So when we were hitting chip shots two weeks ago. We loaded it in our forward leg and we just kind of kept it right here the whole time. Okay, but with driver, we've got to be back here, we've got to hit our shot, and then we've got to follow. And then, as far as the, yeah. the actual or the ball, I mean, should that be about midway? I mean, with the driver? Ball is inside far? your forward heel. Right inside your forward heel. Yeah, okay. and if we need to, Don, we might put it way out by your right big toe if we need to. Okay, it depends. So sometimes, um, if you still just get a little bit in front of it, I might move that ball way out there towards your big toe to really force you to stay back here. Mm -hmm. Chase the ball. We chase, chase it, the ball. yeah. We'll kind of see that, yeah. Is that the one where you told me to put, stand on my tiptoe on the front foot? Yeah. To get, my, to get me mm -hmm. not to do that? Yeah. And should we practice that with our wedge first before we mount the driver? I would, yeah. So you've got an array of clubs again today. Start with your wedge, get loose. I would keep your heel up, your forward heel up while you hit some shots and even hit some drivers that way. And then towards the end, we'll put your heel down and see if we can <clears throat> still feel it. He plays golf that way a lot. Larry's big deal is he gets way in front with his spine. That's my nemesis, yeah. All right. So he keeps his heel up and tries to hit this way. Now I know you're thinking, oh, he's falling back this way. He can't get balanced. Well, he still can then plant his heel and get forward. I'm working hard on that part of my swing to get better. It's uh, I still have a what, a lot of old school golf in my swing, and I'm trying to convert to new school golf to create more club head speed. So, plus, I was a. He's getting out driven. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> That's a little competition. Uh, All right. Except for the lefties, right? It's going to go that way. If my path is inside to out, where's the golf ball going to go? Right? Path should be as straight as we can, or the face as straight as we can. I hate using that terminology, but as straight as we can. So if we can all watch, it's all kind of pitch in here together real fast. All pitch in right here. Come on over, get in your pinch so you can see this right there. You're good enough. Come on in. Come on over here. Right in the pitch right between these two guys. Are doing. So if you watch this, watch it from the back angle here. Where's that golf ball gonna go? Yeah, watch. I'm gonna hit it left. I'm in control of my path. Watch this. Where's that golf ball gonna go? Right, Yeah, because I'm in charge of that path, right? So if we do that again, where's the golf ball gonna go? Right. Yeah, watch. I'm in charge of path and face angle. All right? So when I watch you hit, how do I, how can I see that? Well, the golf ball's telling me what's happening 99% of the time. Sometimes I can see what the body's, well, all the time I can see what the body's doing, but the golf ball never lies to us, ever. It's telling us what we're doing every time we play golf. You guys play golf and it goes crooked. You go, what am I doing? No. Watch what the golf ball's doing. If the golf ball for the righties is going right, that's either the face is open or the path is inside to out. For your righties, if the golf ball's going left, that means the face is shut down or the path is that way. For you lefties, if it's going to the left, that means the path is inside to out or the face is open. If it's going to the right, that means the path or the face is doing that. You guys are in charge of that. How many times have you played golf and you're, going, you're hitting all 
all these shots. You go, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I guarantee you all say it. And you get frustrated. And you think there's something wrong. Well, there's not nothing wrong. Watch the golf ball. It never lies to you. Me and Melissa, we, we make a joke of this. We go, we don't even have to watch you swing and we can tell you what's happening 90% of the time. Or we don't have to watch the golf ball and watch you because we'll stand behind you and go, man, look at this, right? <laughs> we can see that. So it's not that we can actually see the contact. It's because we know what the golf ball is doing, what's causing 70% of the things that's happening. So your path and your face angle causes a lot to do with that. Now there's other things that occur, as Melissa said, if I lean forward, but nine times out of 10, that causes the golf ball to go low. Does that make sense? But we're trying to get you to get launched with release. So, but understand, path and face angle is what's dictating a lot of your dispersement on the golf course. If you understand path and face angle is 90% of what you guys have learned, oh my gosh, you'll think we're the greatest teachers in the world, but we're not. We're just watching what's happening and we've understood it. Okay? And so when I when I talk to these two ladies down here that I haven't got